Hi, this is Ray Moran with the IIBV. I'm joined today by Richard Stokes, Director of Communications for the International Valuation Standards Council, the leading valuation organization worldwide in terms of setting standards as well as with well over 100 countries as members. Richard, thank you for joining us. I know you're based in London. Would you mind giving us a brief overview of IVSC and your activities? Of course, uh, thank you, Ray, and thank you for the, the IIBV for the opportunity to, to speak to you. Um, yeah, my name is Richard Stokes, Director of Communications at the IVSC. Um, the IVSC stands for the International Evaluation Standards Council. Uh, we are a global, not-for-profit organisation, uh, and we're responsible, as you said, for setting the international valuation standards. And these are high-level principles-based standards that are used by valuers in more than 100 countries uh, throughout the world today. And the IVSC is made up of uh, more than 180 member and sponsor organizations, uh, including the leading valuation professional bodies throughout the world, uh, more than 40 government um, or statutory uh, regulatory entities, um, other standard setting organizations, uh, and a growing number of valuation firms. So th th these are the firms that, um, that employ valuers and, and carry out um, huge numbers of valuations for different purposes throughout the world. Um, as an organization, we are sponsored by entities like the World Bank, uh, the International Monetary Fund, um, and our standards are required uh, in legislation um, or by regulatory authorities in, in many countries throughout the world. Uh, in fact, um, with, in, in the case of the, the World Bank, um, there are requirements uh, that countries have to uh, have IVS in place um, in order for certain funding programs um, to be permissible in, in different um, jurisdictions. So. So we have a very international role. Um, our, our, our mission as an organization uh, is to uh, enhance the valuation profession in the public interest. And that is, uh, and we do that through two, through two primary uh, uh, objectives or two primary goals. The first is to develop and embed those international valuation standards so that they are applied consistently throughout the world. And the second, um, and, and you know, just as important um, uh, objective, is to promote the valuation profession and the importance of having strong professionalism, um, ethics, uh, and competency uh, within the valuation um, uh, industry. And so that's why we work very closely with professional bodies and, and, and other entities that, that, that operate at more domestic or regional levels. And um, Richard, but, thank you yeah. for that. Um, I, I was going to mention just briefly that the IVSC clearly uh, is a leader, especially in promoting the profession. And it seems that you know, we have grown so much as a profession recently in terms of opportunities. Trying to reach younger professionals and university students seems to be just a huge opportunity for the profession and the students. Yeah, it, it absolutely does, Ray. And um, you know, and it's not lost on on the IVSC or any of the organisations that are that work um, across the network of member organisations. I think um, I think there's a reality that um, the the valuation profession, like many professions, um, has a um, the sort of a, the, the demographics are such that we're probably going to see a lot of um, well-established valuers and experts but kind of coming to the, to the stage in their careers where they'll be retiring potentially uh, over the course of the next decade. Um, and that creates challenges uh, in terms of ensuring that, that we don't, as a profession, lose a lot of that expertise um, from the marketplace. But on the flip side, there is a superb opportunity for uh, valuation professionals of the future coming into um, what, as you, as you said, is, has been a very fast-evolving um, professional discipline, very broad in terms of its application, 
with career opportunities and paths that can see you traverse different areas of the financial world or different markets, different asset classes. And so, you know, the opportunity for the next generation of value is, is ripe. Um, and and the, the key role for the IVSC and, and the organizations that we work with and with IIBV and others is to provide the tools and resources that allow uh, new generations of valuers to develop the skills and knowledge and expertise um, to, to, to allow them to embark on a career in valuation. And also um, just to get a better sense of where that career path could take them. Um, because as I said, it's very, very uh, broad and multifaceted. Um, so so we, our role is to make sure that we're, we, we're presenting these opportunities clearly uh, to future generations. You mentioned resources, Richard, and you have many that are available uh, at no cost on the website from newsletters to webinars to just different outreach programs. Would you like to mention some of the more interesting ones for our viewers? Yeah, absolutely, Ray. And, and I think, you know, it's important, as you said, that we these are freely available. And, and you know, one of the things that we can do um, as an organization is draw on expertise and knowledge from right right across the world um you know across our boards we have more than 120 leading valuation experts and so we leverage um that uh, in-house knowledge if you like to issue things like perspectives papers and these are um you know bite-size uh um papers research papers or, or um, or think thought papers that, that kind of provoke debate and conversation on some of the big trends that are shaping um, the valuation profession today and, and the world of valuation in the future. Um, so we have a, a pipeline of perspectives papers looking at things like um, the emergence of ESG. Um, you know, we, everybody is um, very aware of, of ESG or, you know, certainly... Um, in, in rhetoric terms, but what does it actually mean um, from a valuation standpoint? And we, we believe that valuers and valuation profession will play a, a, a really huge role in unlocking the potential of ESG uh, in the pursuit of things like um, uh, net zero and, and, and you know, um, meeting climate change um uh, climate change sort of demands and things. Um, other emerging asset areas like cryptocurrencies and, and digital assets and NFTs and all of these fascinating areas. Um, you know, we've got perspectives papers on the way that these emerging um, assets uh, should be approached from a valuation standpoint. We look at things like social value um, because, of course, uh, you know, in, in, in assets you have um, you know, monetary values, um, but they also have uh, impact on um, the world and the communities that, uh, for example, um, infrastructure is is built in. Um, so we look at social value and, and, and how that is measured and, and estimated. So this perspective of papers is really important. The other um, area that I would highlight, Ray, is um, webinars that we uh, routinely host. And I know IIBV do a lot of um, th this type of thing as well. Um, we we run a um, series of webinars on a regular basis. We have one coming up in June uh, where we have five webinars looking at a range of topics relating to valuation, things like inflation. Um, you know, inflation is a bit of a, a, a buzzword at the moment. It's, um, there are inflationary pressures uh, throughout the world. Um, it, it will explore uh, what inflation means for valuation, for cost of capital, um, and look at some of the uh, the triggers uh, for that inflation. Um, it, we will also look at um, things like intangibles. Um, we know that intangibles are increasingly drivers of enterprise value, um, things like brands and IP and workforce. Um, but they don't appear on balance sheets. So we're looking at how those intangibles within a business are understood, better analyzed and reported um, for the benefit of, of, um, of, of many different stakeholders. So th these webinars, again, 
are listed on our website and we we try as best we can to promote them through every channel um, available um, but uh, we would encourage people to sign up to things like our monthly e-news publication um, or, or, or look at our LinkedIn uh, uh, page where they will see updates on these, this type of content. Yes, and we're showing the uh, website address, of course, as we're speaking for viewers to link in and hopefully uh, receive your monthly news uh, updates as well as information on educational events. Richard, with over well over 100 countries worldwide um, coming from the U.S. where I am, I think of us as a fairly mature valuation market. We have lots of litigation setting legal precedents and different um, standards, but I, I know we're growing so quickly around the world. Where do you see the most growth opportunities for our profession these days? Yeah, well, I'd answer that in two ways. Um, one, um, geographically speaking, I think you're right there that um, you know, the valuation profession is, is quite well developed in countries like the United States and, and um, in, in, in Europe and, and other areas. I think um, there are a lot of developing economies where they're really giving a lot of thought right now to um, building the professional infrastructure they need to have a, a sustainable uh, valuation profession. And some of that is driven by um, investor demand. Um, we know that um, countries that are looking to attract foreign direct investment um, need to be demonstrating that they're adhering to internationally um, accepted standards in areas like valuation. Um, if you're an investor, you don't want to have to understand and interpret 190 different systems for valuing an asset in order to have confidence that you can compare and, and contrast your investment. So um, the introduction of IVS in those countries is really important. I think you know, certainly in terms of um, the growth in our membership and our network, uh, we're seeing uh, Latin America, um, and there are entities there such as UPAV, uh, which is a member of the IVSC, which brings together um, domestic valuation professional bodies across that region. Uh, in Asia, um, there's a there's a similar body, uh, which is the um, the ASEAN uh, Valuers Association, uh, and they're doing they're doing the same thing. Um, and 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 also in places like India. Um, the UAE uh, as well, um, and across the Middle East, Middle East region, actually, we've seen quite a significant growth in, um, in, in focus on valuation, which actually emanates from governments and regulators who are very determined to put the resource and effort into establishing vibrant and, and robust um, valuation professions. So, uh, so in short, um, there are lots of uh, opportunities. The other thing I would say, Ray, is that um, when you look across the spectrum of, of, of asset classes for valuation, I think it would be fair to say that over recent decades, in fact, the, the valuation of real estate has you know, become you know, much more established. Um, areas like business valuation uh, are the their rate of the evolution of, of things like business valuation is quite um, patchy across the world. Um, and so in some countries, it, 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 it's quite well developed. In other countries, there really isn't a profession um, that stands behind uh, business valuation. And so uh, in the absence of VPOs there, you'll have accounting bodies perhaps that are picking up piecemeal. Um, but I think that uh, business valuation is one area of valuation that, that we would anticipate growing quite significantly in, in the years to come. Yeah, I agree. There is very large upside uh, in the um, all three of the, actually even more than three of the different um, disciplines within valuation, whether real property, plant machinery, and business valuation at the same time. And one of the interesting outcomes of the pandemic, as unfortunate as that was, as we start having in-person meetings again, and I know you have your upcoming uh, annual general meeting, it's really through the use of technology that the world is becoming smaller and people can just stream these meetings uh, worldwide they they can and um and as you said we we we're looking forward to having our first physical um agm <laughs> since 
2019 when we met uh, in Singapore. Um, our AGM later this year is, is in uh, Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Uh, and we expect that we'll have lots of um, IVSC's member organizations in attendance and that. Uh, that. But I think you're right. Um, I think the, the pandemic um, highlighted uh, the interconnected nature of the world that we live in and, and the the ease with which we can do business through virtual uh, platforms. Um, and, you know, it's been it's been a joy, actually, to observe the continued kind of passion and commitment that people across the profession have had over the last two years to ensure that um, it keeps developing and evolving um, and that we keep creating content and, and utilizing virtual channels um, so that we can uh, continue to work collaboratively. Um, so that's that's been you know been a, a real success story. Yeah, I agree. Especially as valuation touches so many interesting aspects, whether it's in technology or um, things like internet gaming or cryptocurrency, non fungible tokens, uh, even football teams. You know, so uh, there's a lot of different topics and industries that we work with that I think would be quite exciting for anyone to think about as a chance to work on those engagements. Yeah, I mean, emerging um, areas for valuation, um, emerging technologies that will support the valuation professional of the future, um, uh, data, uh, you know, we, we've long talked about the importance of data in valuation, actually, um, some of these data sets are becoming, you know, reality and, and things like um, AI and, and, and other technologies are helping us and, and valuers to um to, to 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 do you know better quality valuations in in many cases um but to work collaboratively and and to work on on new and exciting areas so um yeah but, you know i think if i um when you when you think about the future of valuation you know there's there's a number of things that are kind of really shining a spotlight on the opportunity here and one is um you know the emergent and the re relevance of technology and data to the valuer. Um, the second is the growing importance that, that regulators and other entities within the financial world um, attach to valuation. Uh, and third is just you know, the, the supporting infrastructure that will, that will help um, valuers not just to access careers in, in valuation, but to, to flourish and to really um, get the benefits through, you know, being able to work across markets, across disciplines, um, and, and to really kind of develop, develop their skill set. Yeah, I could not agree more. I think it's both a great opportunity um, for people interested in valuation as a career choice, perhaps, and uh, really for the chance to continue improving our transparency of reports and supporting documentation on behalf of the consumer. So a lot of exciting things happening. Richard, this has been a tremendous uh, discussion. Thank you for this. Any final thoughts before we sign off on this call? Uh, well, I mean, just to say uh, as, a, as a reminder that, you know, we, we the IVSC is continuing to produce um, materials and content that we think would be helpful to, to valuers and to people coming into the profession. Um, you know, we really want to continue that engagement. So um, there's lots of opportunities through the IVSC, through VPOs. Uh, but find out more. Get in, get in touch with us. Um, get in touch through IIBV, um, learn more about the profession. We think it's really exciting and um, look forward to continuing to work with you. Uh, that is great. And perhaps if you don't mind, we can have you back and we can continue the discussion um, over time. Absolutely. Very happy to. Thank you, Ray. Okay. Thank you for joining.